um, as a precautionary measure to reduce the spread of coronavirus, all town buildings are closed to the public. Therefore, this meeting will be held by remote participation. My name is Kelly Grant, and I'll be moderating the remote participation for this meeting. I will now turn it over to the chair of the meeting to call the roll of the quorum. Thank you, Kelly. Greetings, Bob Churchill, chair. Um, I believe we have a quorum. And uh, at this point, we'll open the meeting. We just call the roll, um, so we have the names. Okay, Julian Mallet, Bob Churchill here, Ellie Lawrence here. Here. Okay, um, pursuant to Governor Baker's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of the um, Waterways and Shellfish Advisory Committee is being conducted by remote participation. No in-person attendance will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access and participate in the proceedings as provided for in the order. Persons who would like to view the meeting while in progress may do so by watching this virtual meeting. Um, there is not a live feed to the YouTube channel at this point, but the meeting can be posted. Um, you may also listen to the meeting by dialing into the number provided on the notice of meeting. To reduce any confusion during the meeting, all participants will be muted by the moderator. As you're called upon to speak, you'll be unmuted. Applicants can use the raise hand button or press star nine on their phone to identify themselves to the chair. The meeting host will then unmute applicants when they're called upon to speak. Please wait for the chairman to recognize you before speaking and identify yourself by first and last name and affiliation for the record and then provide your comments. All votes must be roll call votes and after a motion is made and there is a second, the chair will take a roll call vote. All motions, decisions, documents and letters should be verbally read into the record. If it appears the meeting cannot or should not proceed, then the moderator will recommend that the chair continue the meeting to a later date and time or when public meetings can resume normally. I will now hand the meeting back to the chair. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, uh, Mark Burgess, the, uh, the first, uh, I, uh, my schedule here that I have, uh, we have an NOI for Mark Stover, 172 Blue Rock Road for the proposed reconstruction of an existing permitted and licensed bulkhead, pier, ramp, and float, and access stairs within the existing footprints with no seaward expansion proposed. Uh, again, presented by Mark Burgess of Shorefront Consulting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, good evening, everyone. Thank you uh, very much for holding this meeting. Um, so I, I do appreciate it to keep things moving on. Um, so yes, uh, if you've been to the site, where the, the purpose of the project is to replace all of the existing structures from the top of the coastal bank down, including the dock and the pilings. Um, you know, the float probably will get replaced, but that, that comes out anyway. The, um, I know, div, uh, I don't know whether you guys have div, mash, div, division, division of fishery comments or not, but I'll go over the, the methodology. So the, the existing dock is licensed, um, should be basically a no-brainer to be um, rebuild it. You can, it's pretty rickety. Um, and we want to raise it up a little bit because at current, even a minor tide, it's likely underwater. So, uh, Kelly had asked me what the, the end of the float is. And... Uh, At low tide, it looks to be close to just to be sure. I can open the drawing, but. Mark, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I might be not. Okay. Uh, scale off the plan what the distance to the, the depth was. Um, yeah, it's three feet. Currently, so, yep. Okay, uh, so uh, anyway, it's all within the existing footprint. Now, the bulkhead, if you saw it, is as uh, I'm not hearing you very well, Mark. What now? I'm not hearing you very well. Yeah, I'm not sure your connection is all that good. It keeps breaking, coming in and out. Huh. I mean, um, I'm wired in too. Is that any better? Sounds all right so Talking. far. Keep talking. Okay, 
I, I'm, I'm going to actually step Good. further Great. back. Great. Okay. So um, we have three feet of water for the float. The dock is in the same footprint. The bulkhead is proposed to be constructed in the same put footprint. Uh, one, because that's where it's licensed. But two, because of the erosion, the, if, I, if I move the bulkhead landward, then the restabilized slope becomes much steeper, which makes it much harder to stabilize. So I think it's to everybody's advantage to leave the bulkhead, put the new bulkhead where it is. We want to raise it up two feet for flood protection and bank and bank protection because it's still going to get overtopped in a flood. It's only up to elevation like eight. Um, but that allows us to have the at least gradual slope back to where it's stable when we fill it in and plant it. So that's the reasoning for keeping the bulkhead. Is we do have to extend the returns into the bank landward um, so that the so that the, uh, the the fill behind the bulkhead can be contained. And, and um, the stairs are going in the same footprint. They're out of they're out of waterway stuff. So I don't bother talking about those. So there was a shellfish. Um, Carl was wondering if there were any shellfish in corn. And uh, not entirely in front either. That's a good part of the river, as you know. So we shouldn't have any impact to navigation from from the uh, reconstruct um, licensed and permit structures. So with that, questions. Well, I have a, a question for you, Mark. Uh, are you removing the bulkhead? Or are you uh, and then putting the new one in, or are you putting the bulkhead in front of it? The, the re replace? Remove and replace in the same footprint. Okay. So all that debris comes out of there. Yeah, this is Carl von Hohn. Uh, as I said to you uh, when we first discussed this, Mark, just was you know, a little uneasy, uh, you know, filling that tide land that uh, is behind the, the current wall uh, that is essentially defunct. Uh, but, um, you know, not only in the sense of, you know, filling that, that, that intertidal habitat, um, but also, you know, if you, if you were to bring it back and get it out of that intertidal zone, um, I would imagine, I, I can't imagine that the, the permitting agencies are going to go for that um, and just raise the bulkhead wall up a little bit so you don't have that same slope issue uh, coming off the bank um, up higher. Did you follow me, Mark? I do. Um, the bulkhead is already designed for 10 foot exposure. Um, erodes. So it becomes a massive bulkhead. If you have to go landward, it it's going to go up another two or three feet, which is, which is huge. Um, I, so I have a question then. It, it, I, to me, I understand that when you go up now, you look at it and it's, uh, if we waited, if we waited for another cold form of the bank slip again, it wouldn't be intertidal anymore because the, the sand or the, the bank material just fall down and it would be it would be filled in you know, what we're trying to do it would be filled in now. I don't have a connection here uh, hold on so so I'm not understanding I, I mean I can see why they look at it and say well it's intertidal habitat but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't permitted that way. And again, if we get a storm, it won't be that way again. It's only this snapshot in time that water is behind there. Uh, there's no shellfish to impact. And I really, so I really do believe that the best thing for the environment is to, is to fill that back in where it was. And um, just as a matter of, of uh, principle, perhaps, 
I look at conservation in two different ways. You can conserve what is now, or you can conserve what was. In this case, it's a restoration of what was there. Yeah. So there was a, you know, there was a bank permitted all the way down to that bulkhead. We just want to put it back so that the slope is stabilized and that, that benefits everybody. Right now, that site is a mouse trap. You know, one storm, that bulkhead isn't holding anything back anymore. You know, one storm and all that bank comes down, it goes into the river. It's a mess. So the idea was to try to keep it simple and put it, everything back the way it was. And, and this is Carl Von Hunt again, you know, for the conservation environmental end of it, that's what that coastal bank is essentially doing. It's serving the role of an existing coastal bank by doing that erosion. Um, so, you know, and, and it's not necessarily a snapshot. Uh, I would imagine as that bank erodes, that, that intertidal area is only gonna grow uh, once it erodes back out. So that's gonna be the nature from this point forward there. Once you put the wall in, yes, it will stop. Um, but it, it just, it, it's just one of those, those issues that, you know, currently it's intertidal um, and that is a resource uh, with different protections, um, you know, and as it is, you're, you're, you're still going to fill the slope uh, from the high water mark uh, up to the top of your bulkhead to lessen the dramatic uh, slope at the base. Um, so I, I, I guess it's, you know, half dozen of one and uh, six of another, but um, it, that's just how I view it. I don't know if any other committee member feels the same. Well, I think that if, if there were shellfish found behind there, that would be one thing. Um, certainly as the bank erodes, the site is gonna change from non-intertidal habitat, some tidal habitat as the land goes down there, erodes away. But there's nothing else there but sand. So we're, again, we're just restoring the site to what it used to be and trying to prevent a calamity. This isn't an area where the bank is providing in my opinion, nourishment to a coastal beach. Um, this is an area that you don't want to erode because of the narrow waterway. We're protecting the water. Or this project and others like it protect a narrow waterway like, like this from a complete inundation where then it becomes a real mess because you've got too much sand in, in too much of a spot. So for me, the bank is performing, the, in the, the performance standards for this bank are storm damage storm damage protection and flood control and not that it necessarily is actively providing sediment to a, a downdrift beach because there, there isn't much going on there in that regard. And um, too much sand is a bad thing here. Well, like I said, that's just my take on it. I understand. Well, uh, Mark, from, from the pictures that you gave us, and I walked the opposite side quite a lot in the Indian lands, that whole bank there is, is um, slowly slipping down into the, into the river. And it looks like, you know, once you start a bulkhead, it's going to have to go almost the entire width of that area because there are other docks and uh, steps that are in the same sort of situation as, as these. So, uh, you know, I, um, it's, it's going to um, add the next person down the line to shore up their area on that. So it's a question of whether we want to put bulkheads all along that area of the river or uh, let it just float naturally and do what nature does. I, you know, like, Carl said, six of one, half a dozen of another, but uh, one seems more natural than another. Just my thought. Yeah, well, I have gotten some inquiries on some of the other properties that aren't, that don't have tow protection there um, to do just that. And um, like I said, in, you know, in most areas that we work in, we understand if there's a wide beach and 
and it's usable and all of that, you know, that's great. This is one area in Bass River where I don't think you really want any erosion. In fact, if that area was, to, um, you know, by the railroad bridge, about a foot and a half deep at the time, and that's, it has a but it's very shallow there and that sediment and it, but it's actually in a place that we don't want it so i i think it's to every benefit along this that everybody could have toe protection there because if that whole bank came down you guys would be you know, it'd be a mess like I said. cutting in and out again yeah i'm sorry i i don't know what else to do i blast. Anybody? Julian or Bob, any any input? Rick is on too. Um, oh, my eye. Good. No, I, my my only input is I'm sorry I didn't see the site, the actual site. I, um. Yeah, I, I really don't have any comment for this. I came in a little late, I apologize. Julian? <clears throat> there doesn't seem to be anyone in front of his computer. I can't see anyone there. Okay. All right, since we're in a time crunch, is there anybody, um, anybody feel strong enough to make a motion, I guess? I to keep the project moving, I would make a, a motion. A motion that we move it um, to conservation. Yes, the question is do you support it or not? I, I, I don't know. And, and as far as navigation goes, there's no change in the in the float. Um, they're not going any more seaward. It's what's landward that concerns me, but that isn't uh, the purview of our committee. So for some guidance here, uh, the motion is to support the project. Is that correct, Rick? Rick? I would make a motion to support the project. There's a second. I'll second it. All those in favor? By roll call. Uh, Ellie? Uh, I can't vote in favor of this. So I'm a nay. Okay, is Julian still still with us? No, I'm here. Julian, how do you how do you vote on this? From a waterway perspective, I'm okay. I'm just simply restoring what's there. Uh, Rick. Hi. Um, I support it from a waterway's position, but uh. But I understand the concern, Carl's concerns. Um, I would uh, I would defer to con conservation on this. All right, then I guess we'll move to the next one. Okay, Mark. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, hold on. I'm calling him. 
<laughs> yeah, we're get we're getting a terrible feedback uh, because you've got two things open. I know. I, hold on. I got the volume. I got the volume. I got the volume. It keeps on muting. You need to unmute the phone. You've muted yourself on the computer, but just need to unmute the phone, which I think is star six. Correct. Yep, there you go. Can you hear us? Okay. I mean, can we hear you? <laughs> okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so I'm watching you, but you're listening to me on the phone. Okay. Uh, moving on. Hold on, I got to shuffle some paper. Okay, so next one is, uh, this will be interesting. The next one is, uh, 66, right? Um, the next one is 66 Grand View, right? Yes, yes, that's correct. Okay. Okay, so this one, um, there's two elements to this project. There's, a, there's an existing timber bulkhead, if you've been out there. Um, he wanted to, he wants to replace that. There's a little bit of rotting on the, on the end, starting at the bottom. So it's not in horrible shape, but he does want to address it. When I looked at the site, I'm like, well, there's resentments on both sides. I know that bulkheads are generally worse in a shorefront protection um, options than a sloping rock revetment. So I said, okay, well, let's do a sloping rock revetment. It'll, it'll match up in line with the existing ones on either side. Um, and, uh, you know, life is good. It was, there was a beach up there, but there was fronting salt marsh, which I believe is why they have a coastal beach, even though they have a vertical structure. Um, and we're, we weren't going to be near the, um, we're going to stay away from the marsh. You know, basically we just blend everything right back into the adjacent uh, neighbors so that uh, it's all the same now. Um, and I told him, I told him today, I said, he's probably going to have to have a, a vegetated buffer behind this, which I think I showed in the plan. I did. I said I had a four foot gravel buffer for the resentment. Um, anyway, so there is a, a proposed gravel buffer uh, behind the revetment. So then, um, and from a waterway standpoint, I'm not sure some of the revetment is below mean high water. So if you guys want to talk about that first, then we can go into the dock if you have any questions on the revetment portion. Um, also, there was an outfall pipe there from the town. And um, Kelly was told that it doesn't function anymore and they went and cut it off because the, the pictures I have with the project initially show it extending a good 10 or 15 feet out from the bulkhead. But when I went to stake it out uh, yesterday, they, it's chopped off to about a foot. Now I brought that up to the homeowner today and he states that water still comes out of that pipe. Uh, I don't know to what flow but it still comes out of that pipe. So we're gonna to have to maintain that. Um, there's a bunch of riprap and debris below it, you know, blocks and crap like that. That can be cleaned up and done a little, certainly done a little bit better. But I think for now we've got to plan on leaving the outfall pipe. Um, so that part of the project, uh, converting a bulkhead to the rock revetment, leave the outfall pipe and deal with it. Um, can I ask about any questions or issues with that portion of the project? Uh, yeah, Mark, Carl Von Hohen. Uh, same, same thing with this. Uh, you're going to be filling tidelands. Uh, now, you said that th there's still remnants of a bulkhead there. You don't indicate that on the plan or the layout, at least that I can see or recognize. Uh, 
where and what portion of this is there? Um, is, is it that straight line that's high at essentially at the top of your wall or is it somewhere else? Yes, it's the straight line at the top of the wall at the, um, where the stairs end. The, the stairs start in the lawn and end at the bottom of the bulkhead. So the dark heavy line, basically right, where the, where, right behind where the revetment is shown in blue, that's where the wall is. Yeah, that heavy line, that's the existing bulkhead right there. And that's just on the, on the westerly side of the property does it go all the no. way across? It goes all the way across from property line to property okay. line. And it's shown on the elevation view. It's in blue, so it's a little bit, uh, it's, not, it's not very bold. But if you look, there's two vertical black lines right at the beginning, right at the beginning of the section line at the end, at the, at the beginning of the railing for the dock, right where the, right where the, uh, yep. Okay, that's where the bulkhead is now. So the existing revetment would extend a couple of feet landward of the existing top of the bulkhead, and then you have a, a four foot uh, gravel buffer uh, behind that. And I, I had to do that to stay, I didn't want the tow stones anywhere near the marsh. So that's why I brought it in uh, pretty close. All right. Nope, that's so fine. If we are, yep. No, so thank you for filling, that clarification. Okay. If we are filling tidelands, if, if that's the way that's being considered, I certainly don't want to complicate things um, any more than they might always be. So that was my suggestion to him because I always thought it was a good idea <laughs> to take a vertical structure and turn it into a sloping rock resentment. But in this particular circumstance, it might not have been the best idea. So we're happy to stick with rebuilding the bulkhead in the same footprint and leave everything else alone. Yeah, I and just Kelly, bring that up. I bring that up for discussion purposes and, you know, how, how I, I'm looking at the project. Um, so thank you. Yeah, I thought it was a good idea at the time, but um, it, it seemed reasonable, but uh, I didn't realize that it comp made other complications, so. And the other, the other, well, when we get to the doc, we'll talk about that, so for now, Continue with the revetment. Okay, thank you. Ellie? Um, <laughs> well, I, mean, I, know, I know we're going to talk. So. Yeah, I, I noticed in, in one of the pictures, and I was down on site, uh, that the marsh is right up, there is grass right up to the uh, bulkhead itself, and um, that would be removed or covered with the stone when you put the stone on. Yeah. That's just, yeah, I think you can understand my reasoning, but I can also understand why um, we need to leave it the way it is. So I'm okay. The, the, the homeowner is okay either way. But I wasn't trying to do anything odd. I thought thought it was doing a good thing. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, see, you can see in that picture how, how much further out the outfall pipe was. Yeah, right. I, I, I noticed that a couple of years ago, and there was water running out of it. And, you know, it I don't know if it's a drainage from um, the road or, I mean, it isn't a big flow, but it, there is water that drizzles out of there. It's just a curiosity. Yeah. Just to clarify yeah. on that, um, I, I did speak with the, um, a representative for the property owner, their contractor um, a while back who said that that pipe hadn't functioned in years and that they wanted to cut and cap it and remove the debris. And um, that it's not a town um, drainage pipe because it's private road. But um, I gave them permission that if it wasn't functioning, that they could remove it. But I didn't give them approval to remove it <laughs> as such, because I didn't know whether it was functioning or not. So I said, it's up to them to get permission to actually cut and cap it, depending on who actually owns it or has an easement for it. But in terms of actually mm. doing the work in the coastal beach, I said that they could because it would be an improvement, but it was up to them to get the actual permission to do it. So just to clarify on that. Thank you, Kelly. That's all I got. Um, Ellie, do you have a preference between a rock revetment versus keeping the bulkhead where it is? 
Well, I, I, I like the rock revampment only because of the um, wave um, deflection, especially there in the uh, speed zone. But I hate to see the uh, the stone replacing all that grass there, which is what's I think keeping the sand there. Because if you look in front of the other rock revampments, they don't have any beach whatsoever there, and they don't have. I know. So um, I, I would like to keep. The uh, the vertical in that in that place because it seems to be working. Yep, I know we don't say that very often, but every site's a little bit different, so I get it. Anybody else on the revetment? So there are rock re uh, there are rock revetments on both sides. Yes. Okay, on the south side, there's a rock revetment as well. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well. There, okay. Uh, based upon that, I guess I don't have a problem being a part owner of a property that's had a, a, about eight feet or eight to 10 feet of shore uh, scoured out by the rock revetment at the windmill. I'm not a fan of them uh, next to a beach, but uh, that's, a, that's a personal comment. Um, and I would say that, that the revetment uh, is, is okay with me. It's uh, unclear to me where the high water line is in pictures. Um, it varies along the wall. So in the middle of the wall, mean high water is almost out to where the, to where the revetment would be. That's why it shows it that way in the section line. But as you go toward each end of the wall, east or west or north or south, if, as you go toward the property line, the uh, mean high water tucks in closer to the to the bulkhead it doesn't touch it doesn't quite touch the current bulkhead so if we if we replaced the bulkhead in its current footprint it wouldn't necessarily need to be licensed but um, i would license it with the dock obviously um, the revetment would absolutely require a license but um so there's a blue line on the overhead yeah it says mean high water i can point to it but and if you go left to right, it starts almost at the bulkhead. Yep, uh, Kelly's tracing it right now. That's the mean high water mark. Okay. Now, Mark, I have a question because of what you just said. Is this current bulkhead, is it licensed or unlicensed as it is? Um, unlicensed as far as I know. I didn't find anything anyway. Okay, thank you. But in, in these circumstances, I like um, I would license it with the dock because mm -hmm. if you're going to go for one, you also go for both. And with sea level rise, it'll probably be up against the bulkhead in five years anyway. So you might as well license it at all at the same time. Anybody else? Or do you want to move on to the dock? I'd move on, Mark. Okay, moving on. So yes, yeah, so we are proposing a new dock here. Um, so I'll explain my reasoning here for this. Um, so first of all, again, uh, I know why I did this initially. So the dock is angled right now. So the first thing I wanna say is, I think at this point I would like to rotate it so it's perpendicular to the property. The reason I did it that way the float would stay where it is because that was the closest to land that I got the deepest water, um, you can see. So I would leave the float where it is, but I want to I would rotate the dock um, almost to where you, where you see the gray line where the, the stairs and the revetment would, would have been. And that'll just straighten it up and become perpendicular to the shoreline. So, I'd, But the reason I did it that way was because I put the float where it needed to be and then I put the, um, the, the start of the dock where the steps were. Uh, but it doesn't have to be that way. I think it would look better if we rotated it clockwise so that the start of the dock was actually about 10 feet to the right as you look at the plan. Um, anyway, that's a minor thing. So the dock, um, it's, it's designed to current standards because they are, are going to have steps to the beach one way or the other. We don't need the lateral access steps. It's five feet to the underlying structural member at high tide. Um, 
in that location. So it's high enough. Um, and as you've heard me say in other projects, what we struggle with here is which is better for the environment um, and the neighborhood. So in this case, we have two choices. We could go out, three feet of water is available, another 33 and a half feet out. But for this location, that extends further than the adjacent docks. So for me, that wasn't the right way, to, the best way to do this. Um, so what we proposed, initially we were talking about with the applicant, we were talking about a dinghy dock. Um, and as you'll see in my in the alternatives analysis, yeah, we've done those in, we've done those before, but we know what happens. They bring the boat into the dinghy dock, and then the boat's in a foot and a half of water. So for me, the best way to protect the bottom and make sure that we have three feet of water all the time so that it cannot be used with less than three feet of water was to use a boat lift. Um, and the boat lift would have to have specific stops so that the boat cannot transit on or off the lift until there's three feet of water. Now, the way that you do that is that I talked to the owner today, their boat draws 18 inches. So give or take a couple of inches, you would have to set the boat lift at say 18 inches because the boat wouldn't float off of it until there was 18 inches more water on the lift. So they would not be able to use this or anything less than when there's three feet of water at that, at that dock. So that eliminates the prop, any prop scouring and anything like that affects from trying to use the dock at low tide. So the, the boat lift provides that advantage and that limitation to allow the use of the dock not extend into the waterway further than adjacent docks and still protect the habitat, which is the goal of the regulation. So we are, I know you guys, uh, this isn't your, your purview, but we are asking for a variance from the water depth because we feel that the boat lift mitigates that concern and it's not more detrimental to the environment to use a dock like this in this circumstance. Um, other than that, it's designed the same as all the docks that I do. Um, he, let's see, this is proposing the fiberglass Pearson piles everywhere for the boat lift and for the dock. And it's a monopile, is it a monopile design? What did I do here? No, regular, it's a regular design. Um, I do have monopile dock designs, if you're interested. They're in Harwich. You can look at them. <laughs> um, that, would, that reduces the amount of piling almost by half. But um, that, if, if that was a concern here. So there was a shellfish survey done. There was a, a, a fair amount of, of shellfish found, which makes sense because the, the bottom walking out, you know, I walked out there yesterday at low tide and um, was easily able to walk around. There's a lot of like, I don't know, I'd call it moss, except it's underwater. Um, a lot of moss at the, along the bottom. And that could be the time of year. I, I don't know, I'm not an aqua uh, vegetation kind of person, but um, certainly seems like the, the bottom is a viable shellfish habitat um, in a sufficient quantity to, to um, protect it, you know? So that's, that's basically the, the dock in a nutshell. Um, I believe that this approach in this location, you know, gives the access that the applicant's looking for, but also protects and limits, protects the environment and limits the dock from being used in a manner that would negatively impact uh, the environment. So with that, I'll turn it over to you guys. Uh, Carl Von Hohen, uh you had referred to a float. I don't see a float being proposed here. Just the boat lift, correct? Correct. It started out as a dinghy dock proposal, and if I okay. left the word float, if I left the word float in the narrative anywhere, that's my bad. Okay. Very good. And you know, just for the record, I, I would prefer a mono pile system, reducing the number of piles there. Uh, just simply because of the, the shellfish habitat. Um, but uh, those are my main comments on it, um, trying to regulate the boat lift 
um, from going low enough uh, at low tide to get a boat in and out. Don't know how we're going to monitor that, but um, or fully engineer that. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd much rather see lift systems uh, at this point than uh, than floats, especially when we're only talking about um, two, three feet of water for the uh, extension of it. So, thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah, we have 2.2 feet of water right now. So we're eight tenths, eight tenths of a foot shy. The way, Carl, that you would limit the boat lift is a mechanical stop. Oops, 17 more minutes. Okay, I guess we gotta go. Um, you would put a mechanical stop on the boat lift. That would be a condition in the order. Right. And yes, the monopile, a monopile will reduce, it will eliminate five piles from the system. You still need two piles at the end of the dock for stability and right. two piles at the beginning. But all the middle piles could be could be doing a monopile. I have a standard design for that. It's not a big deal. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. We have a motion. Any other comments? Uh, I, I, I like the idea of, of staying with the existing bulkhead wall rather than the revetment. Okay, so we would we would revise the, if your recommendation is that we take that to the commission and then I would certainly uh, through the commission issue a revised plan with a bulkhead design and I'll straighten out the dock um, and I'll change it to a monopile if those are your recommendations. Mark, when you straighten out the dock, would it, would it basically come in line with the float to the uh, south there? Because right now it looks like it's sticking out quite a bit from that other one. Um, no, when I rotate it, the float would stay where it is. I'd rotate the beginning of the dock clockwise till it's perpendicular okay. with the bulkhead. So it'll still stick out farther, um, more intrusive into the uh, speed zone there. It does for that one, but if you look at the I look on Google Earth and look at the docks to the uh, to, to the right of this one as you're looking at the plan, okay. and they stick out as as far as this one. So it's it's not um, it's it's not what it seems in the plan. I just could only zoom out so far. Okay. Well, I have a I have an issue with the um, two and a half feet, but uh, they're not putting a float in there. But the boat's still going to uh, shade that area it just won't be on the low in the low water but it's still going to shade to a certain extent that's it goes well, it'll 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 boats on the inside of boats and stuff yeah. um it'll actually shade less because you can get the boat up in the air because that's the other advantage of these lifts you don't have the float that's there all the time with the shading and the boat there all the time with the shading once the boat's on the lift you crank it up in the air and all those two issues go away What size of boat is that designed for, Mark? Um, that's an eight thousand pound lift, so it can it can go for a boat that's you know up to eight thousand pounds. The I, so boat. I can't really say. It's the hull design that, that's going to really limit it. You know, if you get a deep V, um, it's going to be tougher to get a boat in there. Mm -hmm. But he said his boat only draws eighteen inches, so it can't be that big. There's something drawn in there. I just wonder what. I just illustrated. Say again. I mean, there's something illustrated in there. I just. I mean, there must be some width to that lift or something. I don't know. I just. Oh yeah, the lift. The lift is 13 feet wide. Yeah. So whether, given a certain boat, uh, whether you, whether they can you know, make it, make it less wide or not. I'm not sure, but the frame of the lift is the frame, you know, it's designed that way. So uh, an 8,000 pound lift that's 13 by 13 can handle a much bigger boat, but you know, it'll be conditioned uh, so that you can't do that. And you'd have to physically alter the stops on the lift, the mechanical, whatever you put weld it. I mean, weld it, who cares, you know, but, but it has to be a permanent uh, thing so that the boat that's there can't operate in less than three feet of water. 
I guess maybe welding wouldn't be a good idea, but bolting anyway. A beam of 13 foot and a, 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 a displacement of 8,000 pounds is a pretty good boat. Actually. That's a very good sized boat. I agree, but that's just the standard. The boat lift doesn't come in, you know, 15 different designs. They have an 8,500 pound and a 10,000 or a 14,000. So it, it just, that's the smallest one they make. I see. Of the brand that I've been, that I've been using, that's all. It's the same lift exactly that's going to be put in Mill Pond um, or Mill Creek, uh, you know, West, West yeah, Yama. Same ones, the same brand, same model, everything. It looks like a minimum of 20 foot boat that's uh, drawn on there. Yeah, I drew that. I, I just drew that. I don't know what, exactly what boat he has. I can find out, but I, I do know it just, it only draws 18 inches. So I have a 19 foot boat and it probably draws that. So yeah, maybe a 20 footer probably isn't un, un, uh, characteristic for that. But I, I, I don't know. Always sell it and buy another boat. So, yeah. that's just what he has, right? What now? I'm saying that's just what he has now, right? If you can always sell, you can always sell a boat and buy another one, right? I just, but I just wonder. It's not. I, I'm just talking to myself, really. Yeah. Well, he could do that, but if he does, he has to readjust the boat lift so that the boat can only transit in three feet of water. So it can be complied with no matter what boat he has there. Yeah. I guess until it draws three feet. <laughs> yeah. You know, you get my drift though. Yeah. Any other comments? Anyone have a motion? Well, to move this along, I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, bulkhead as a straight bulkhead and no uh, rock revetment and the dock with the boat lift um, it will need a variance. So I think it has to go to the com, com but it has nothing to do with the navigation or the shellfish. So, and with the monopoles and no float. Yeah, I'll second that, Ellie. Ellie, can I uh, just clarify that, that the uh, bulkhead be reconstructed in the same footprint, uh, a monopole system be set up for the pier, and that a stop mechanism be placed on the uh, boat lift to prohibit it from uh, going any lower than three feet? or however that works? Uh, so yes, I agree. Great, thank you. So you have a motion, do you have a vote, Bob? You're muted on me. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Roll call vote. Okay. I, I'm, I vote to approve um, based on that modified motion. Allie? I approve. Rick? I approve. Julian? Jim, you said muted. I, I, I approve. Very good. Oh. Good. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, moving on, last one. This should be really easy. So, yeah, eight minutes left, Jane says. Um, exist, uh, existing permitted and licensed bulkhead, timber bulkhead, replacing it with vinyl. There's vinyl bulkheads on either side of this bulkhead now. Exact same footprint, exact same height no difference except it's just being rebuilt same footprint same height everything that's it all right mark this is carl von hohen i don't have any issues with this rebuild in the same footprint
I don't either. Uh, it's, uh, you're not moving any more landward, are you? I no. mean, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. this. Seaward. No, exact yeah. same footprint. And you have tiebacks that are going to be in there. Yep. Yeah, it'll probably it'll probably get new anchors. Um, people have said, well, it's been there 40 years. I'm like, yeah, but are the anchors going to be there another 40 years? So generally, we replace the anchors. Okay. And will this be done? Well, that's a whole nother question. We'll tackle that topic later. What? what okay. Well, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm putting on my CONCOM hat, which, uh, you know, it's uh, the uh, uh, partially removing the wall instead of and keeping the silt from falling in and all that stuff. So, right. But, yeah. Silk. Silk. Right, uh, they'll require a silk curtain, DMF wanted that. And yeah, you do it a section at a time so that the whole thing's not open. Correct. Yeah, like I said, I put on my other hat for a minute there. That's okay, I'm wearing two of them at the same time too. <laughs> I make a motion that we approve the plan as presented. Second. Um, let's have a roll call vote. Um, so Ellie, you're in favor. Yep. Rick? In favor. Julian? Aye. Aye as well. All right, very good. Well, thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate the uh, pulling together the meeting quickly. I really do. Uh, it means a lot. Um, so, and thank you for the support. And Ellie, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll Zoom you tomorrow night. <laughs> and Kelly, thank you for hosting. No problem. Okay. Take Good care, night. everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. Um, I really don't have much to uh, discuss. Uh, things have been a little slow. Uh, they've restarted some work on the Parker's River Bridge. Um, but um, the county dredge got stuck in Bourne, so they're done for the season here in Yarmouth, unfortunately. Uh, but other than that, I don't have much to report. Um, anybody else have anything? You know, looking at the time, we're going to need to close out pretty soon. I don't have anything. Well, not hearing any, I thank you very much, everybody attending tonight. Thank you, Kelly, for uh, for hosting this. And I would suggest, Bob, you take a motion for adjournment. May I have a motion, please? I'll move to adjourn. And a second. Second. All in favor. Good job, everyone. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Stay, stay healthy and safe. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Take care all.